This place is wild. It's like blowing our minds. That was scary and insane and <laughs> exciting and <laughs> yeah. Oh man. We made it to Yellowstone National Park. This is America's first national park. It's the fifth most visited and it's our 18th national park. Eee, we're almost <laughs> in the 20s. Yeah. <laughs> so we drove very, very early this morning from the Grand Teton area, which is just south of where we are now. So we're still in Wyoming. However, this park's unique because it's actually split among three states. So 96% of it is in Wyoming, 3% in Montana, and 1% is in Idaho. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Fun fact about Yellowstone, over oh. half of the world's geysers are in Yellowstone and we're gonna start the morning with the world's most famous. Old Faithful. <laughs> So obviously when you come to Yellowstone, you want to see Old Faithful erupt. So we've been using this website called geysertimes.org and it predicts the next eruption for a bunch of different geysers, not just Old Faithful. So it says here at 7.56 plus or minus 13 minutes, it will erupt. So we are here at 7.28 and we have about 14 minutes till like that window opens up. So we're hoping it's a good one. They have this huge area that you can sit down and watch it, tons of benches. There's really no one here. I guess it's too early. But one thing to note about this website is it only tells you the next eruption. So you can't see like a list for the day. You only see the next one that'll happen. So we suggest, at least this is our plan. We wanted to start with this early. That way we knew we got to see it at least once. And then if we have more time later, we'll come back and check it out. Maybe see a bigger one, maybe see a smaller one. Cause apparently the sizes vary as well. Oh, and if you do miss it, it's like sometimes like an hour and a half between them. So that's why it's important to use geysertimes.org. All right, we're in the window. The eruption could happen any minute now. Very exciting. It just made a bubbling noise. It's about to happen. I don't know why I'm whispering. I don't want to disturb it. That was so cool. Awesome. I feel like half the fun is just waiting for it to happen. Like the anticipation just gets you super hyped and every like gurgle you hear, you're like, oh, yeah. is it time? But then it wasn't. And then it finally happened. It was just awesome. Yeah, we read that they can be anywhere from like 80 feet to 200. Like 100 something, maybe 200. 100 something feet. And they can go from like a minute and a half to like five minutes. And we feel like this one was kind of a lighter one, but it was still about 80 -ish, 80 ish feet. And it went from for our, about our calculations, our yeah. accurate calculations. And it went for about, I'd say two, a little over two minutes. So yeah, it like shot up really tall for like a handful of seconds and it went back down yeah. and it kind of did some lighter stuff, but it was still awesome. Yeah. So since we think it might've been a lighter one, we're going to try to come back later and maybe see if we can see an even taller one, but I would still leave happy if this is all yeah. we saw. It's awesome. One interesting thing though, is it's not even the tallest or the biggest one in the park or the world. So there's actually the largest one in the world is in the park, but it's not, I don't think it's as like regular. This is like the largest, most regular one. Yeah, I guess it's like the most predictable one yeah. probably. Yeah. So that one's a little bit more north. We forget the name right now and our <laughs> internet's not working, but we'll find out we'll the name. We'll tell you in a bit. Maybe we'll check it out later. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. All right, we're ready. We got our patch. And while we were in the visitor center in the store there, we got to talk into the lady behind the counter. Her name is Melissa from Simple Art RV cooking with Melissa and she was awesome. We were She's in there the for like 20 minutes talking to her. <laughs> yeah, she was awesome. She saw our camera and was asking about our camera and then yeah. we started talking about how we both do YouTube and then she mentioned she lives in an RV at the park and we're like we live in a van and so we just <laughs> talked and talked and she was just the nicest oh, yeah. like most friendly bubbly person just loved her. So Melissa if you're watching which I hope you are <laughs> you are awesome. We hope we can meet up with you sometime. Yeah. You can make us some, Have some of those short ribs. Hot short ribs. Yeah. yeah that'd be so awesome. <laughs> So right next to the visitor center is the Yellowstone Inn. It's a national historic monument and it's the largest log building in the world. This place is awesome. It's like a Lincoln Log Palace. 
So today we're gonna to explore the southern part of the park and then tomorrow we'll explore the northern part. And the southern part is where a lot of the things that you think of when you think of Yellowstone are, like the Grand Prismatic Pool and Old Faithful. Yeah, there's tons to see here in the park. There's over 10,000 hydrothermal features here, <laughs> including geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, and mud pot, that's the last <laughs> one. So we're gonna start here uh, by Old Faithful walking the trails and boardwalks to check them out. like rotten eggs up in here. <laughs> gosh this place is wild it's like blowing our minds we're only like five minutes into this trail yeah i came in with i mean i knew it was gonna be cool but i came in with low expectations but i mean we've only been here like an hour or so and just walking around it's just i'm obsessed with this place it is just way cooler than i thought it would yeah. be everyone kept saying they like the tetons more but i've just never seen anything like this place it's just oh we'll try to come up with more adjectives but it's incredible <laughs> So normally when we're exploring the national parks, we like to find a nice hike to go on, but these boardwalks are just too easy. Yeah, like we weren't sure how we'd feel about being on the boardwalk with everyone, but you get a ton of space between people and it's busy, but it doesn't feel overcrowded. And they're just awesome because they get you right in front of all of the geysers and the pools and the- All the stuff. All the things. <laughs> and there's really no other option besides walking on yeah. these and they're super accessible. So if you're in a wheelchair, I believe this would still be wheelchair friendly. Um, if you can't really walk super far, you can still walk on this a little bit. I don't know, I'm- It's perfect. <laughs> this, this place is just, every step we take blows my mind even yeah. more. I'm in love. So we were continuing on the boardwalk and we came upon the Grand Geyser, which is the tallest predictable one. Yes, right? in the world. In the world. And so we saw all these people sitting there and then we saw that the window was like over an hour long and there was still another hour of the window. <laughs> and we were like, should we wait for it? Nah, man, we were, we were almost gonna go, I right? was about to, I was about to leave. <laughs> and then it exploded. Yeah, as it's still going right now. So this one can shoot up to 180 feet. Yeah. And it lasts for like, what, nine to 12, 12 minutes? minutes? It's been at least five minutes. Yeah. It's still going. The initial eruption was crazy. It happened so fast, we couldn't get it on the camera in time. The camera was off, we were like scrambling, but yeah, wow. The, uh, the plaque back there kind of, it tells you like some of the other little ones around it'll start bubbling and then it'll start going, but I don't think it did that. It just like It like went. bubbled <laughs> for a second and then bam, unlike Old Faithful, which, bubbles but then nothing happens so, yeah yeah if you're on the boardwalk make sure to stop and see this one we've had a huge list of like all the ones we want to see but honestly we just keep stopping at every one each one's so cool and unique so we've noticed that the pool colors range and so we just saw a chart and it says that if it's like really dark it's 80 degrees fahrenheit and then like the bluer it is the hotter it is so it says blue is like 199 degrees fahrenheit yellow and green and orange are kind of in the middle and then clear is like 144 degrees So we just got to the morning glory pool and this is definitely one of my favorite ones so far. The colors are so bright and it's really, really deep. Unfortunately, it used to be much more like bright and blue. People have been throwing like rocks and coins and stuff in it. And I just read that like every year they have to clean it out and get all the trash out of it, but it's slowly, slowly changing the color of it. So don't throw your trash guys, but it's still really, really beautiful. 
So from the morning glory pool, there's a trail to the right that takes you to the Biscuit Basin. And this was our next planned stop for the day. We were gonna drive there, but then we found out there's a trail and it's, it's a nice day. So figured might as well just walk it. This one's beautiful. Or should I say beautiful? Hey. This is crazy. We're on the walk to Biscuit Basin, which no one else is on. It's just us, which is a little scary because of bears, but that's okay. And we just came across this geyser. Artemisia. Ar Artemisia. And it's so blue and beautiful. And no one's here. This is the bluest one. This so is far. definitely the bluest one so far. So I think we're discovering that the biggest and bluest and maybe the best ones are on this trail to Biscuit Basin. I don't know. It's they're awesome. They're hidden. There's no one here. No one. It's just us. We we were kind of regretting walking at first because we're really hungry, but I'm so glad we chose to walk. And the, Breakfast the, can wait. <laughs> the name of the trail is not helping me. Biscuit Basin. Mmm, biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> we see some bison and they're going to be really close. We just missed a bison. We were walking up to the end of the trail here to some more awesome pools. And he was just, there was a couple of them just walking by the- Right by everyone. Yeah, they like walked over the boardwalk. <laughs> so if we would have been here like a minute earlier, we would have been like 20 so feet So close. Yeah. Obviously you don't want to be that close, but yeah. we still got to see them pretty close up, yeah. just not as close as we could have if we were like 30 seconds sooner. Yep. It was awesome though. We're sorry if you guys are getting sick of seeing all these hot springs and geysers, but we're hooked and we can't stop staring. All right, after a quick bite to eat, we are ready to tackle the Fairy Falls Trail. Doesn't seem like too difficult of a hike. It's pretty short and there's a waterfall at the end. Also, along the way, there's a turnoff to go see the Grand Prismatic from above. It's called the Grand Prismatic Overlook, I think. And we hear that's the best way to see it, but we'll also be checking it out from the ground in a little bit. The Grand Prismatic is just one of those iconic Yellowstone things that you have to see while you're here. And seeing it from a little bit higher up was awesome because it really put into perspective how massive it is compared to some of the ones we saw earlier at least. And you could see like the rings of color around it a little bit better. It was just so pretty. Yeah, we read that the best time of day to see it is around noon or one or two when the sun is directly over. It would make the the uh, colors pop on a nice sunny day, but we kind of got a cloudy one. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, there's a buffalo coming right, or a bison coming right at us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we lost our sight on him, but we're like backing up backwards. That way we can keep our eyes on him. But it looked like he was just going to keep coming. So we're just going to keep on moving. <laughs> there's not really anywhere for him to go. He's like on the trail and the Grand Prismatic is right there. And then this is woods. I guess he could hop the fence, but it's kind of one way traffic for him unless he wants to go back up. I think I see him. Yeah, he's coming. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like excited, but also kind of terrified. Yeah. That was scary and insane and <laughs> exciting. And <laughs> yeah, oh man, so many feelings. I mean, we were just walking and he just popped out. Well, it's really pretty close to us, I'd say. And it just freaked us out because at first I didn't know what it was. I just saw this massive like yeah. dark brown thing. But then he just kept coming and coming and we just, we had nowhere to go but backwards. Yeah, so. it was probably like a quarter of a mile at least. we just walked backwards. Yeah. So we're going to try this again. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> we're here on a cloudy day. We're not getting the high sun that's going to make the colors pop on the Grand, grand Prismatic. But the even better view would be from a helicopter, from above or a plane. But... So save your pennies yeah. because that would be awesome. Need the dollar bills for that. All right, we're gonna keep up going on this trail now and hope that that's the most wildlife experience that we get. I'm open to more. <laughs> yeah, but maybe from farther away. If that was yeah. a bear coming at us, that would have been very terrifying. And if you had another way to go, like only way to go for him was to follow us. Yeah. This trail is great because it's very flat, like level. There's not like a ton of like rocks or roots to climb over. It's pretty easy so far. We've been told we have 15 minutes left. Wahoo! We 
made it! And the waterfall is awesome. It's beautiful. It has like, it, like the water hits rocks and it kind of makes like different levels. So it's kind of like three waterfalls in one. And there's like this, I don't know what you call it, like, almost like a mini cave or like. It's like dug out kind of. Yeah, it's dug out. We're behind the waterfall, so it looks really cool. And now for the grand finale, the grand prismatic spring. That was good, good job. <laughs> and everyone else decided to come here too. It's yep. definitely the busiest part of the park so far. Parking was very hard, but we're in, we're hustling. We're here, we're, here. we're walking up on it. We're, we're almost there. So the Grand Prismatic is 200 feet across in diameter, making it the largest hot spring in the Yellowstone Park. To me, if you only have time to do either the overlook or go actually down to the Grand Prismatic, I would do the overlook if you can. Yeah, a lot less people, parking yeah. was less of an issue, and yeah. you can see the colors better. You still could see the colors here, and it was really cool to see how big it is compared to you more on like eye level. But yeah, it was it was kind of like a Disney World experience. And yeah. I think our patience is going down a little bit because we're pretty tired. So it was a little overwhelming, but it was still beautiful. So yeah. do both if you can, but if you could only pick one, do the overlook. But we lied earlier. That was not the grand finale because... What? What? We just wanted a couple bites of ice cream. <laughs> AKA scoops. scoops. <laughs> <laughs> so if you missed our Grand Teton vlog, Huckleberry is a big thing here in Wyoming this time of year. So we got Huckleberry ice cream, but then we saw some other flavors that sounded good yeah, too. We were just going in for just the Huckleberry and then we were like, oh. We're in just one scoop, which I think is what we said in the last, <laughs> the last time too. But I got salted caramel and espresso heath because I'm hoping the espresso heath gives me that little pep that yeah. I need to get through the rest of the day. I got salted caramel as well and moose tracks. Oh, I'm not I'm totally sure what that is, but I think, it, I think it's like I a, think it's like a peanut butter. Oh, I'm uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we made it to our spot for the night. We paid for a campsite because there aren't a lot of options in the immediate area that's accessible to a lot of the other areas of the park. Uh, we also wanted to take a shower and use the laundry facility, so hopefully we smell and look <laughs> a little better. Um, but tomorrow we're going to explore more of the north uh, side of the park, and we're really excited about it. But before we forget, we gotta put our patch up on the wall and check off yellow stones. That one, 59. We're waiting for an option. It's so steamy. I'm blue, da wa dee do 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 Largest hot spring in the Yosemite. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to do Always that. keep doing that. <laughs>